it's a bit on the slower side also. But um, I don't want to take anything away from our bowlers. I, I believe we, we hit our, our our length and everything perfect. And um, the other side, maybe they bowl a little bit bad, I would say. Okay. Shaka, so from next TV, you talked, you mentioned about the bowlers. At half time, when you were chasing, you knew that you were chasing at 170, with this pitch being used for the third day. At that time, did you think it's going to be that easy for you guys to walk home in like 12, 13 hours? Um, I wasn't worried. I know once I, I stay in the wicket, uh, I'm always a, a positive player. So once the ball is in my arc, I will I will make use of it. So I wasn't worried. The other guy on the other end, he was actually easing the pressure off me. So and we had wickets, a lot of wickets in hand. So I know if we were well, watching the first two games, they scored over 200. So um, it was actually a, a low total. So it wasn't anything for us to, to panic about. Well, he bowled. Um, he, the, I, I never heard him complain, so I believe he's he's fit and ready to go. How is the game story? Who brought you up to a fantastic story? So it's not just a whole career. It's a whole series. It's a whole aggressive player. It's a whole aggressive player. Well, I'm naturally an aggressive player, but um, the way Luke played, you know, it was good to actually be on the other end. I'm looking at him, so um, I got some time to actually um, assess the wicket also. And, and see what's the right shot, uh, shots to play. So, as I said, he played well. It's good that he, he got us to that start and it was easier for me. Okay. You play with uh, Lord Bronke, and he's come back in Madrid too. And he's been on, on straight form since then. What do you think he's, he's doing that you can see from the other end? Because he's putting so much pressure on the batsman, making your job easy, I think. Well, he's an exceptional player, as I said. Um, he can hit the ball all around the ground, and any any batsman who can do that um, is a is a dangerous batsman. So um, I think he's doing the basic as um, often as, as possible correctly. So that's that's what I believe is working for him, and um, we just have to learn from it. So Fletcher, what's the game plan in the future? So igniting the memories of Islamabad, United, you and Rocky as becoming the right pair for the rest of the team in the Super League and same. Well, actually, I didn't play for Islamabad. I played for Peshawar. Uh, Luke played for. I mean, the Ronki from the Islamabad. So you both are doing the best team, the Zambians and the Rangers. So we met some Um It was a great tournament. Um, I strongly believe we, we could have won the, the finals against them, uh, but it was unfortunate. Hopefully, next next season we can end up in the finals. It doesn't matter who team we 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 play in. And once we win the, the, the tournament, so that's important. How was today playing against the skipper? <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, it's, it's a good feeling, and um, it's, it's even better when, when you win. So because you know he's a captain that wins a lot. So you know it's good when you play against him and you and you and you beat him. It's just that we have to continue and not just win one game, but win well all the games that we can and, and ensure that we win the tournament also. Okay, that's it. Uh, one more. Keswick and I, we are good friends, very, very good friends. Um, he's a good guy. It's just that on, uh, today he, he didn't execute as well as he should. And um, I wish him all the best for the other games. So, so you, have, you have a good laugh afterwards when you get in? Yes, yes, we did. Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay, okay. thank you. Hello to everyone, another episode of Match Point by Dr. Adnan and we are in the day number three and today a big one for the Toronto because we are towards the double header. Yes, two matches uh, would have been uh, the part of the play game today. The first game that was being played and right now it's been finished some moments before that was be, uh, between 
the winner team of the day won Toronto Nationals and the newcomers Edmonton Royals where Lala was there and lot of Pakistani uh, breed was there uh, in the Edmonton Royals so big day for the semi to face them so the start of the game uh, as we know and as I told you in the previous games on the match point and that the general strategy as we have seen that there is a no depth in the wicket there is I mean there's full fledged plain batting wicket and there is a no room for the bowling no help for the bowlers and as according to the schedule every uh, captain is trying to chase so same did uh, Sammy once again but this time the formula didn't work out yes Darren Sammy uh, uh, tried out and that he will make some things possible for the Toronto Nationals but nothing happened but actually the toss was won by Edmonton Royals and he did the same what Sammy did in the game one at the day number one they put Toronto Nationals to the bat and Toronto Nationals this time when came uh, Johnson Charles wicketkeeper on the five and then Nazakat Khan zero caught Ronki uh, bowled Tanvir and Sohail Tanvir was uh, Sohail Tanvir has started the action over here in the North America so lot of his fans over here were enjoying his bowling the Pakistani pacer so Toronto Nationals uh, got the trouble right in the beginning after the poor start and then uh, came the Steve Smith who was the hero in that match uh, on the day one but Steve Smith uh, was caught by Hassan Khan uh, and uh, bowled by Dinsa. Hassan Khan the Quota Gladiator sensation winning with a six then ultimately uh, happened to be a uh, William in the for the Quota Gladiators in the playoffs. Uh, so uh, this time in the uh, uh, I, we have seen the Edmonton Royals that most of the Pakistanis whether the Pacers whether the bowlers whether the fielders they over flooded the match and everywhere they were in the ground today with the Edmonton Royals uh, Devich who was the man of the match and who was hero that day only uh, bowled by the Parnell for the 13 and he couldn't make much Karen Fuller 28 the big uh, um, uh, the big uh, partnership uh, happened over here down the track at the number five and number six and the big knock came from the Canadian captain Nitish Kumar good day for him yesterday we saw uh, blooming and we uh, blossoming the Junaid Siddiqui, Ryan Pathan, uh, Ali Khan lot of youngsters and today another Canadian uh, Nitish Kumar we saw with a 55 on mere 37 balls he was the uh, pick for the Toronto national scorecard and if he would not have scored might be the score would have been less than 150 and would not have reached and later on Darren Sammy was bowled by Hassan Khan on 19 the traditional rivals gladiators versus Zalmi and uh, down the order Mohammed Naveed was not out on the 26 so Nikhil Datta was also not out on 4 uh, so extras 9 and total was 169 for the loss of 7 wickets so uh, who didn't bat Mohammed Sami and Kastrick Williams uh, couldn't bat and the 20 overs quota they have finished and now the Edmonton Royals for a chase so we will come right after a short break. You are watching Match Point by Dr. Adnan. So welcome back after the break. I was telling you about the day number three. Match Point by Dr. Adnan. And we are into the double headers. We are waiting for the second game uh, between the Montreal Tigers and and the cricket west indies team b the first game of the day on the day number three first game of the double header was won by the edmonton royals so i was telling you about the betting of the toronto nationals the heroes on the day number one who claps like the zeros uh, so uh, while telling you i was telling you about their bowling so uh, sohail tanveer uh, mohammed irfan shahid afridi hassan khan each drawing one one wicket each but the pick of the bowlers was when parnell with three overs 24 four runs and two wickets he got he took the two wickets but he was way too expensive to control uh, the uh, uh, control their team but ultimately everything was well and as well uh, so uh, Toronto National couldn't uh, touch the triple figure of 200 so they took a sigh of relief so they went to a chase and then how you can forget the men men on fire who is the man on fire Luke Ronke from Islamabad United the New Zealander Kiwi 
he is the man to watch he is the man to follow luke ronki wicket keeper caught nikhil deta bold williams he made the brisk 47 would you believe he took 18 balls that was the masterpiece of the innings and then he left nothing for the rest of the players uh, to do so lot of effort from him and anthony fletcher was not out on 68 and he remained the man of the match for his brisk inning but this damage initial damage done by the fletcher peshawar zelmi and the luke ronki uh, islamabad united so both zelmis and united of the psl doing the damage uh, for the toronto nationals and andre fletcher uh, andre fletcher uh, was very cruel against his previous skipper semi and ultimately cruising gang aga salman whom you would have been seeing in the pakistan super league in lahore kalandar uh, caught nizakat khan bold pollard on 38 but at that time game would have been taken away uh, from the toronto nationals and game were in their game was in their favor so ultimately uh, abraj khan shahid khan afridi sohail tanveer mohammad irfan hasan khan wayne parnell couldn't bat lot of public here wanted to see lala the boom boom but he couldn't bat today and we couldn't see that whether how many times he will throw the ball out of this ground so we will see in the next match so again Uh, i'm just making it short by telling you who have joined right now a match point by dr adnan that edmonton royals have beaten toronto nationals the day one victorious uh, team by the eight wickets huge margin and they have told we have come mates they have announced their entry in the global t20 canada and right now uh, we are going to see the opener of the second second game of the double header which will be between the montreal tigers latish malanga versus the cricket west indies b team um uh, thanks for inviting me to this conference um, i thought today we had a pretty solid game after we had a shaky start but we managed to pull it back pretty well and it made became easier for us at the back end of the bowling okay so question I just start start off with your media organization and uh, where where you're from. This is someone from Post Post. So you are part of the Western Indies winning squad and you took Western Indies into the finals by beating Sri Lanka in Sri Lanka this yes. and three in semi final. And today, like in between seventeen to nineteen, the team lost uh, nine. You lost three wickets in nine balls. So what was going in your mind like uh, this running with that endless? Um, but I always had trust in my teammates. I always had trust in myself as well. but i just played it as i saw it and i just did what was needed to be done in that moment of time okay next question thoughts what was the tactics with coach ramble in deciding to open the score and right. when um, you guys walk in the dressing room watching the dress in front of that how tough was it to get there for the team well we go for ramble he's not really a, a natural opener He was just put there, and that was good that he showed the maturity and he went out there to bat. But after we saw the first two overs, we felt pretty confident that we could get get the total. Just needed to maintain a good run rate, and we knew we could have come close and even win. Uh, pretty. I'm pretty happy because um, to those guys played IPL for a number of years so first of really rope ro- ro- them back in was a good effort in my opinion so this cheers to the bowlers and the ground is pretty small so I would say like eight runs are over maybe nine okay. but yeah yeah it's shot wrestling from next TV pardon shot oh yeah from next TV in the states but this is the fourth game on this pitch so at the half time when you went in and you knew you were going to chase 184 What was the talk at that time? Did you not think they had like good spinners in Narayan and Sandeep? What was the talk that how the wickets were playing? How comfortable were you chasing 184? Well, to be honest, we know it's a small field, so we have the guys that have the ability to hit sixes. So we weren't really focusing on those bowlers. We were rather focusing our on our strengths, and I think that's our biggest asset: just focusing on ourselves and just don't play any names. Because we're here to prove a point. Um, to be honest, 
I was a bit more nervous because there, there's no restrictions on overseas players. So it's basically we are playing against like the best international players in the world. So I think it's a good competition. It has lots of talent in it, and I can see it going very far. And I hope to be a part of it in the near future. I'm Dr. Khan from Match Point, Dubai, Canada. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, uh, two people uh, were on the toss yeah. and Montreal Tigers decided to bat. Was it a surprise for you that in this uh, G20 league so far, this was not a surprise to see you? That um, chase? Not really, because we, when, we, when we checked the stats, we realized that the teams that were chasing were coming out on top more often than not. So, we were pretty comfortable because we wanted to bowl first either way. And the Lurin, uh, Lurin was, as when he was playing, it reminded me of his innings in the first CPL. It ah. was very brutal against Narayan. Yeah, yeah. So might be I thought that Narayan would have been under pressure at that time. Could have been the memories of that man against yeah, the it, it could have been, but cricket plays on the day, so and there's a different surface out there to compare with back in Guyana where it was. So he just went out there and did this, did this thing. Congratulations. Thank you. Once again, against Narayan and Malinga, you guys scored around 38 runs in 8 overs. Mm. So it means that you got 150 runs yeah. in the other uh, 12 overs. Was it a plan or is it just like you went with the flow? Um, yeah. Against Narayan, we, we wanted to play it safe as possible, just get ones and twos and take a limited risk. Against Malinga as well, we knew he was going to be a, a major factor and his slow balls were a bit deceiving, so we just played it by, by ear and we just saw it through. Um, not really, not really. We could, could fluctuate, we could go up and down, we could change, but I don't think that I am positioned there for the whole tournament. I could, I could drop or I could go up one or two. Uh, Puran, he's a very good young talent. He's more for the future as well as Brandon King. Puran is, he has over 50 20, 20 games already. He played in IPL, well, he was in IPL, Bangladesh Premier League, CPL. So he has a lot of experience for his young age. Um, Brandon, he plays with the St. Kitts and even Patriots. And he plays a couple games at home. He got some scores last year, so he's one to watch as well. I don't want to say too much. Okay. Last question? Sayyid from Rupus. Pardon? My name is Sayyid from Rupus. Yeah. What would be your next step that you depend on on the journey? What would be your thing in the first time that often you play here? You know, any single play which can be game changing? For myself? Um, I would just like to do as well as I can every game and just do whatever the team needs at that moment and just, again, I can't stress enough on playing for the team. As long as we win, I'm happy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello to everyone, another exciting day and exciting episode of Matchpoint by Dr. Adnan and we got into the last over so the most sensational match until now in the global t20 cricket league and you are watching match point by dr adnan exclusively on e Avas. yes a great match and which was underrated because of the cricket west indies b team but who knows that would not be a b team and they will make montreal tigers on the back foot and make them the b team latish malanga and tom moody's team is struggling right now and who knows they could have been out of the tournament montreal tigers two days two losses not a good day for them as i told you is a holiday now today it was a double header and the second match in which the cricket west indies while chasing they won the match but earlier i want to tell you that this was the first ever game right now in the global t20 which in which the winning the toss winning captain he didn't choose uh, to uh, field because so far we have seen until a lot of matches have been played from the day one when the uh, Darren Semi of the Toronto Nationals and lot of other captains after winning the toss they put 
other team into the bat and they preferred to chase on this dry bad pure batting wicket and none of them wanted to bat first on this wicket but to our greatest surprise this time when cricket west indies b team and montreal tigers was playing their second game in the second uh, on the third day and for them it was the second game in the two days they after winning the toss decided to bat and but what they decided to bat was the dream was not fulfilled and ultimately chased in the last over by the cricket west indies b team a terrific game of cricket but i want to tell you the details that the um, uh, montreal tigers when started the game sunil narayan he made the 28 the wickets was were falling at the regular intervals they uh, at ne at any time we didn't see that they uh, were breathing easily they were not giving them the place even them sekandar raza was hitting down the uh, uh, down the innings, uh, he started to hit them and lot of other players, Ryan Smith, uh, he made 16, uh, George Worker uh, was out on the 4 and then Hendricks, Moshes Hendricks came, he made a brilliant 26, a brisk 26 on the 15 and then Sikandar Raza, uh, this is Zimbabwe uh, players, Pakistani born Zimbabwe players, he made 47 on 37 balls. So, after Sikandar Raza, there is a Dan Danesh Ramdeen, the wicketkeeper making 17, Ryan Khan Pathan 11 and then Ashley Nurse 10 uh, but it was not enough and extras, Mr. Extras was 2-2. A little bit more for the Cricket West Indies, they will have to figure out this thing. So 22 extras they have given and the total for the 9 wickets in the 20 overs, the um, uh, score that they made Montreal Tigers was 183. So the target given to the Cricket West Indies was 184 which was seemingly not very easy for the Cricket West Indies and we thought that might be they uh, would have been collapsing. Uh, in the middle of the innings but the very gentle start and then a slow start sluggish start and then building up the innings and this was uh, what they did it but first of all i just want to tell you that after uh, the batting was finished for the montreal tigers who was the pick of the wickets uh, jeremy lewis he was the pick of the wickets with three wickets he finished his quota of four overs and then the three wickets each uh, for the obit mccoy and uh, the Jeremy Lewis. So, three wickets both of them uh, have taken, and the pair uh, grabbing the two wickets at the end, making the uh, total 184 chaseable for their team cricket v west indies so cricket west indies when uh, uh, came into the uh, came into bat usually we were expecting that they will be having a very tough time by the sunil narayan latish malanga the deadly yorker man and along with the peter Siddle. but something strange happened right as what we expected they were put in the trouble right in the beginning where anthony bremel the uh, wicket keeper uh, he was caught by the wicket keeper lbw by siddle in the very beginning without troubling the scorer on the zero but then uh, ruth ford rutherford came for the 22 but the one who crafted the innings and uh, took the match away from the Montreal Tigers, Latish Belenga and Tom Moody team. He was the Brandon King and Nicholas Puran, who was later adjudged man of the match for his brilliant 58 on 35 runs. He was caught by Ryan Pathan, bold Siddle, and Brandon King was caught by Ashley Nurse and bold by uh, Worker. Uh, so, and later on in the innings when they were out, uh, Shamar Springer made the Bricks 27 on the 18 balls and on the last over, uh, when the last over was bowled from uh, Montreal Tigers, only 4 runs were needed and on the very first ball, a straight 6 had been hit if we can see down the track if you can see towards that end which is opposite to the pavilion you can see the screen a great six landed over those trees and finishing the match in the style so the thing to uh, for my surprise was Nicholas Puran. I will tell you uh, some of the old history of Nicholas Puran, but let me tell you first of all uh, the uh, how they bowled Montreal Tigers. Montreal Tigers Peter Siddle he has thrown three overs and he was quite expensive with the 33 runs, but he has taken the two wickets. Latish Malanga four overs, 32 runs and two wickets. Ashley Nars two overs, 23 runs and he couldn't grab any wicket while Sandeep and George worker took the one wicket each 
So, uh, at the end of the time, when I, I was telling you about the Nicholas Puran, so Nicholas Puran is a dark horse. If you remember this guy very well, he played against Pakistan in Abu Dhabi. Last time when he played against, uh, that, that was against Pakistan and the year was 2016 when the West Indies, the touring West Indian team uh, came over there and they lost to the Pakistan but he played against Pakistan uh, and a very brilliantly he played, also crafted the innings. Nicholas Puran uh, is uh, uh, blossoming day by day. Some of the cricket West Indies players who have not got a chance uh, to uh, come back in the team but they were brilliant in their innings uh, in their teams and especially in the CPL when they were playing basically this guy is a Trinidadian so a born batsman like a Brian Charles Lara so according to a Trinidadian uh, it was nothing uh, some uh, new for him uh, to have a batting heroics from his bat so this guy Nicholas Puran when there was a first CPL Caribbean Premier League so might be you guys remember he was playing from the Trinidad Tobago and against the crucial match crunch match against Ghana Amazon Warriors he hit it Sunil Narayan like anything around the ground Sunil Narayan couldn't breathe in between Sunil Narayan tried everything out on the pitch but this guy Puran gave him so hard time and he was so harsh to him later on when the West Indian team went to the uh, Sydney for the Australia uh, to play against the Australian team and against the Aussies this guy gave lot of resistance to the Aussies and in one match he made 1-1-4 one, one, also but ultimately Australia winning the match in style and he couldn't uh, match the beauty of Aussies but the Nicholas Puran uh, what I was telling you the beauty of this guy what I have seen he crafts the earnings when I say he crafts the earnings it means he is my MST I mean Mahindra Singh Dhoni Mahindra Singh Dhoni what is his beauty Mahindra Singh Dhoni comes in the difficult times Comes, he used to come for the Indian team in the middle overs when India was struggling or reeling for 50 for 6 or 50 for 5 then he was crafting the innings and after he finished crafting the innings and then uh, Mohindra Singh Dhoni never got out in the middle and never leaving their boat in the danger in the middle of the sea and then executing Indian team and then punishing the bowler and then after crafting the innings becoming stable and then hitting the deadly straight sixes and finishing uh, the game in the executive style and the signature style six this guy Nicholas Puran is almost the identical copy of Mahindra Singh Dhoni but unfortunately he couldn't get a chance that much along with the West Indian team so uh, this was it from here from the uh, Maple Leaf Cricket Ground uh, on the day three where the double header was played uh, so again I remind you in this pro uh, program that the first match which was played between the Edmonton Royals and the Shahid Khan Afridi and lot of Pakistani players uh, so uh, Edmonton Royals and uh, the other team uh, the Toronto Nationals who were victorious on the day one with the Darren Sammy team and the Steve Smith returning to the international cricket so uh, first match there was a huge upset when Edmonton Royals single-handedly destroyed Toronto Nationals by eight wickets as you have seen in the previous episode and the latest from the uh, King City uh, north of Toronto where we are right now the latest feeds are right now that Cricket West Indies B team has beaten Montreal Tigers on the day three second game so Montreal Tigers having the two losses Cricket B West Indies and Edmonton Royals having the one game each and the one win each while the Winnipeg Hawks and the Toronto Nationals uh, Winnipeg Hawks having the one game and the one win while the Toronto Nationals having the two games one game uh, uh, they got the victory and the other game they were defeated so this is it from the match point and tomorrow when I will come there will be another double header and we will show you some exciting finishes for the match so tomorrow again it will be a double header two games will be played in the Maple Leaf Cricket Ground and two games would be very exciting and the two same teams will be seen tomorrow also in action but against the different opposition so tomorrow big crowd is expected as there is a holiday and again uh, to see Shahid Khan Afridi and lot of Pakistani stars in the Edmonton Royals so we are believing to do tomorrow again a huge crowd so the first game will be between the Vancouver Knights and the Winnipeg Hawks 
the two teams will be uh, uh, up on front, uh, front on front against each other and the, we will see that can Vancouver Knights, the Chris Gale team can do some magic tomorrow or not and Winnipeg Hawks we need to see that David Warner and the Winnipegs uh, they can uh, maintain their momentum, winning momentum or not and the second game should have been, I hope so, it will be very interesting between the two winners of today. The first team was the uh, was winner today was the Edmonton Royals and the second team was the Cricket West Indies. So the second double header which will be played tomorrow it will be between the Cricket West Indies B team and between the Edmonton Royals. So that's it from here. Nothing more to tell you. And so when I will come tomorrow with a New Zealand zest on match point, I will bring you the fresh updates that what's going on, who is in, who is out and what Pakistani stars are doing over here and how they are shining in their respective teams. Till then, time for me. Uh, along with my team, uh, Zishan Ahmed, Dr. Dilneshi Khan, Ahmed Ahmed, I say you goodbye from Maple Leaf Cricket Ground. Till tomorrow, say you bye-bye.